Margaret Lockwood was a well-known British actress, famous for her roles in films during the 1930s to 1950s. She became a household name with her performance in The Lady Vanishes in 1938. Her acting career included a variety of roles that showcased her talent and made her a favorite among audiences. Now, think back to the first time you saw Margaret Lockwood on screen. What was the film or show? How did her performance make you feel? Also, we're curious about any interesting stories or facts about her that you might know. They could be things not many people are aware of, but you find them fascinating. We'd also love to hear about your most memorable experience related to Margaret Lockwood. Maybe you have a story about how her films touch your life or a family tradition involving her movies. Share your stories and memories in the comments. We're excited to read them. Stay tuned because we have many surprising, amusing, and touching facts about Margaret Lockwood coming up. You won't want to miss what's next. So keep watching as we dive deeper into the life and career of this remarkable star. Margaret Lockwood was a significant figure in the British film industry during the 1930s and 1940s. Her performances in films such as The Lady Vanishes and The Wicked Lady were well received and contributed to the popularity of British cinema during that era. Lockwood's ability to draw audiences with her screen presence helped the British film industry during a time when it faced stiff competition from Hollywood. Her work also opened doors for future generations of actors in the UK, influencing the industry by showing that British talent could lead successful films. Despite the challenges of her time, including the war and the dominance of American films, Lockwood's success demonstrated the global appeal of British cinema. Her legacy in the film industry is seen in the continued appreciation for her films and the paths she paved for actors in Britain. In the spotlight of the entertainment world, she shared the screen with Tommy Hanley in a brief film titled Spotlight on a Star, which lasted just 10 minutes. Her career spanned into television, where in 1965, she appeared alongside her daughter Julia Lockwood in The Flying Swan off-screen. She led a life free from alcohol, never acquiring a taste for it. Instead, she favored hot chocolate, stocking up on 60 sachets at once, affectionately referring to it as her preferred drink. Struggles with balance due to a middle ear disorder led a celebrated actress to live quietly in Kingston-upon-Thames, a private area in London. Her personal life was marked by challenges, including a marriage strained by her partner's intense jealousy over her success and appearance. She strongly opposed her use of makeup, smoking, and even her acting career. Earlier in life, she was educated at Belvedere College and Sydenham High School in London, setting the stage for her later accomplishments. A long-term personal and professional partnership defined her life off-screen, sharing many years with John Stone, her co-star in both stage and television. Her commitment to her craft was evident early on, with her studies at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts laying the foundation for a distinguished acting career. Despite her success, she faced personal health challenges, battling a persistent viral ear infection that affected her balance and hearing later in life. A dedicated group of admirers celebrates the work of a classic film actress through a society on Facebook. This actress, also a mother, chose a unique name for her daughter, inspired by a historical figure, to mark the special circumstances of her birth. At the onset of her career, she briefly adopted a different stage name, signaling the start of a notable journey in the performing arts. In her later years, she embraced the joy of family life with her four grandchildren, who brought laughter and energy to her home. Despite her habit of smoking frequently, she found solace in the tranquility of her final home, nestled among friendly faces in a serene neighborhood. Her days were spent surrounded by the familiar comfort of trees and the quiet companionship of those living nearby. Her journey in acting began at the prestigious Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, leading to her discovery and subsequent representation by a top agent in London. Despite her talent, she missed out on the lead role in the classic film Casablanca due to her studio's decision not to release her. Later in life, she received the Commander of the Order of the British Empire honor, marking her final public acknowledgement. Following this, she chose a life away from the public eye, living quietly until her passing. At a young age, she stepped onto the stage and found her passion for performance. By the age of 10, she was already captivating audiences in Cabarese. Her first significant role came when she portrayed a fairy in the classic play A Midsummer Night's Dream, marking the beginning of her professional acting career. Years later, 
Her talent was recognized with a Top Actress Award at the Sun Awards, a notable achievement in her acting career. She chose a serene life away from the limelight in her later years, residing in a house near Richmond Park, a place she loved. In memory of her and her love for the community, a road was named after her, ensuring her story remained woven into the fabric of the area she called home. During the 1940s, she was the most popular actress in Britain, drawing crowns to cinemas where she often met with her admirers. As the mother-in-law to actor Ernest Clark, her personal life was as much in the spotlight as her career. Her collaboration with Michael Redgrave was set to continue post their acclaimed film The Lady Vanishes, with plans for Rob Roy and The Blue Lagoon. However, these films were never made due to the onset of World War II, which shifted the nation's focus and resources. In her personal life, she valued privacy to such an extent that she often left the theater incognito using a balaclava to cover her identity and avoid recognition. This desire for privacy extended into her later years when she chose a quiet life, opening her doors only to those she held dear like her sister Lynn and her friend Phyllis Calvert, who shared leisurely drives with her to the garden center. In a gesture that spoke volumes about her character, the actress chose not to attend a new version of a film she once led. Years after her memorable performance in a 1945 classic, she was invited to a screening of its remake but declined. Her absence was noted, as she had once brought to life the very character being reimagined for modern audiences. This decision highlighted her personal connection to the original work and her discreet way of honoring it. In the midst of a successful career, Margaret Lockwood, the star of British cinema during the 1930s and 1940s, faced a personal tragedy that was as dramatic as any of her on-screen roles. Her daughter, Julia Lockwood, born to Margaret at the height of her fame, suffered from polio. This illness struck Julia at a young age, causing a significant impact on their family life. Despite the challenges, Margaret balanced her career with her dedication to Julia's care and recovery, showcasing a mother's resilience in the face of adversity. This aspect of her life, though deeply personal, reflects the strengths she carried both on and off the screen.